Chega, chega dessas águas. Agora eu vou precisar que o neurônio de todos vocês e o meu ativem e a gente vai participar de uma entrevista que é em inglês. Porém, tem algum surdo aqui? Tem algum surdo? É, você surdo, botei aqui a legendinha para você já. Algum surdo ou pessoas que são semi-analfabetas igual a mim e não entendem inglês, né? Que tem a legendinha, tá? Tem a legendinha. O que que acontece, guys? A legenda vai ter alguns termos que a gente não vai entender. Os que eu não, não entender, eu pausarei e perguntarei para vocês. E a mesma coisa para vocês aí, perguntem no chat que eu leio e respondo, beleza? É, já deixem aqui o salve para o Yotobas, pelo amor de Deus. E vamos lá. Você tem very good in coordinate bad circumstances. I mean, Ai, sport, yeah. pera, esqueci do título. Tio conta como foi a montagem do elenco da Vivo Kate Stars. E a ênfase é no Dizames, que ele vai falar coisas pesadas sobre o Dizames. Sim, yeah, em esportes. Yeah, in the world, probably not. Depara. Não, não, não. Em esportes. Young industry, yeah. Sure. Because why are you asking that? Because I we have a lot of kinds of different quotes. Yeah. We have motiv motivation motivational quotes who good gave good speeds and inspire our players. We have quotes then literally Joko. teach something about League of Legends. Joker so what kind of coach you define yourself? Because we have a lot of kinds Caralho. of quotes. Isso é Come forte, tá? Some players say, so this coach teaches me everything. É muito I, forte. Know, I don't know everything about the game. And they teach me macro. They teach me, they teach me Mano, eu amo o Shaep perguntando. Lot, this coach Ele evoluiu me, muito. Say motivational things to me. And they put me in another place when I go to start the game. So what kind of coach you define yourself? What do you think I am? Ooh, I think but, 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 eu quero saber de todos vocês. O que vocês acham que o Sil é? O que Shaep está perguntando... É que tipo de coach o Sil acha... O Sil é, tá ligado? E daí ele se torna sexo. <risos> coach do sexo. E daí ele citou alguns tipos de coach, né? Que é aquele coach mais analítico, que ensina mesmo. É aquele coach mais motivacional, mas que visa ali relacionamentos e cuidar deles. Esse é o caso do Joko. Eu não acho que o carro-chefe do Joko, por exemplo, seja... É, o macro, a estratégia pesada. O Joko tem sim isso, mas o carro-chefe dele é cuidar de todo mundo, ser a mãezona do time, sabe? O que eu acho sobre o Sil é que ele é um all-around. All-around. Ele é de tudo um pouco, para mim, tá ligado? O cara, ele poderia trampar melhor que até CEOs que hoje estão no CBLOL e não sabem nada de gestão e o Sil sabe. Vamos ver o que, que ele acha. Both. Why? Because when I see behind the stars, you are a very motivational coach. You see a lot. I you say, you're agree. fucking amazing job, guys. You are agree. amazing. <laughs> But when I, talk, when I talk to Gigo in tomorrow, I don't know, when, in Sunday, I talk to Gigo in Sunday, he, he says a lot of good things about you and how you coordinate him in game and make him a better player. So... I don't know what kind of coach you are because I see one thing, but I hear other things. What do you think, Joker? Mm, I think it's the opposite. Mm. I think that Olha, we contrário. have a problem, especially with the players you are coaching right now. They had a problem with coaches for a long time. Mm -hmm. They had bad coach, bad coaches for a long time. Yeah. And when they were faced with you, that's not only a hardworking coach, but someone that actually connects to them. And I think that's the important part. You connected to them. Yeah, I think so. On a personal level, on a professional level, everything, you're connected. Yeah. And fast. And when you did that, actually, you can motivate them because of that. But uh, I don't think that I can label you. You actually do what's better for the team. And at the moment, you organize them. And you make them, you're making this team, the key team, be the best version of themselves. And <clears throat> this is something that I What? had a, a part of my, of my questions for you because... At the moment, you are working with two players, like every single player there, but two players especially, that you're doing something that people may not grasp, but for example... Eu acho que o Joko, ele tá dando aquela voltinha ali, né, para responder. Mas eu acho que aonde ele tá indo é que o Sil é o meio que faz tudo ali, tá ligado? Ele organiza, tudo mais, ou all around. Dan is someone that, for two years, I know that you're laughing, I have his picture in my face too, and he came here the first time, not... On air, it was very funny when I saw him the first time. But yeah, he was good a while ago. 
It was mm. very good a while ago. And for the fans that actually watch here, I always said that he would be probably the best jungle, the best Brazilian jungle in the future, like two, three years ago. Oh, yeah. When I was on Wide Rift, you remember that. Yeah, yeah. I always said that. But last year, he had a shit year. Yeah. They, they, not, they say it is incredible at screens, <laughs> but seeing so stage... Don't follow him to video, we'll, no, he he's Overall shit year, because what I expected is that would be the year that he would... Break out, yeah. Break out. And he didn't. Now, he's breaking out again. And that's a point for you, because you actually connected with him on something that didn't connect last year. Okay, I know that it's, it's complex than that, that there's a team, there's a situation, but actually worked. And Gigo is the second one. Yeah. Because... He actually played last year with Key, and now he's also popping up. Yeah. So to have that happening, the only thing I can be certain is that you actually connected to the essence of the two players that was kind of lost for some time. Yeah. So the motivational part, I think, is a consequence ah, because they actually trust you. Ah, yeah, I mean, nossa, o Joko deu um baile aqui agora. Tipo, ele demorou algum tempinho para responder, mas a forma que ele concluiu, ele deu um baile, caralho. Eu, eu, eu concordo com o que o Joko falou a respeito do Seal também. Bacana o, o pensamento do Joko, tá ligado? Eu gostei bastante, de verdade. Yeah. Um, do you know, you know Yamato Cannon, right? What? Yamato Cannon. The, the, ah, Yamato the Cannon. Yamato. When yeah. I hear him talk, it makes me want to go out and die for him, you know? He has this deep, masculine... Yeah, but that, that's, voice. that's... The, and, <laughs> the face, and he, and he uses the... He uses the, you know, the... He's got his like, he's got a nice visual as well. A nice build, yeah. He, he looks very good. He's handsome. He speaks charismatically. He uses cool words like, <laughs> you know. The way he talks to his yeah. English is Look, charming. I'm not a natural born leader. I don't think, I think very few people are. And I'm also not naturally charismatic or anything like that. Nor do I think I am charismatic at all. My secret Bullshit. the coach I am is I'm just... Better, no. Bullshit. A, a pessoa nunca reconhece os pontos fortes dela, né? Como que o Sil está falando que ele não é carismático? Ele meteu essa? Não é possível. I'm not a natural born leader. I don't think I think very few people are and I'm also not Eu acho que OK ele falar que ele não é um bom líder, tá ligado? Até porque não são todas as pessoas que nascem líder, né? Nascem é um líder nato, mas é uma coisa a ser desenvolvida, tá ligado? Agora, ele falar que ele não é carismático? Como assim, porra? Você olha para ele, ele é carismático. O líder nato, eu não sei. Eu não sei, aí eu teria que entender mais, enfim. Naturally charismatic or anything like that. Nor do I think I am charismatic at all. My secret and the type of coach I am is I'm just a, I think, in my, at least I like to think this. I think I'm a decent human being. I think it starts there. That's important. That's more than, that's much more important. than yeah. I think if... I think if you know what your job is, and for me, I fundamentally understand two things, and I think this separates me from a lot of coaches. One, coaching is not about me. Coaching is not about me. Coaching is about the players. Everything that I do is for the players. Everything that we do is for the players. Everything that, every second, every decision, every word that comes out of my mouth, or I, what I do for them needs to be about them, not about me. Um, and I know I do a lot of media. That's also true. But I also take a lot of time to avoid the media too. For example, when I talk to them. Oh, you did recently. No, but that's conscious as well. I always you know, yes, I sit, you, you I sit did down. it consciously recently. So I sit down with the behind the stars uh, content team and I say, look, yeah. there's too much of me, things like this, or image making or setting up in interviews or thinking about how I sell my player in the best way. Like these things, everything that I do, I think, first of all, um, is about them. And the th thing is like players are human beings, so they're not stupid. They right? notice. They're, they're not stupid. So they know if your intentions are good. And that's everything that I'm trying to do here. Uh, and I think that's, that was the first thing. Uh, so because I understand that, I think people naturally tend to trust me more in the environment, people tend to work better. And the, the second, other than being a decent human being is just knowing, like just being educated on the topic. So for example, I grew up in a really toxic household environment. I improved my life and worked on myself in a very toxic way. So for example, um, it was do or die, and I'm a piece of shit if I don't, like this, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. And that carried on to my coaching naturally, actually. Something that I learned from Peter was, was and Rob, Rob Davies, I don't know if he watches these uh, podcasts, but the performance coach, what he taught me was how to build up your players and being educated on the topic of punishment versus, you know, reward 
and how to actually build up your players in that way. So the language I use is predefined, well thought out. And it, it's done in a way where you don't have to be naturally charismatic or an incredible leader if you know what to say. It's like having a script, really. So instead of saying, you are so shit at what you do, I say, I think we can embrace the challenge here and step it up. It's a really fucking big difference, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, to tell you the truth, I'm, I don't think I'm a motivational coach. I think I'm a little bit of a strategic one because I just Background. come from a better region, like in terms of lol skill, to be honest. But it's not like I'm insane at the game either. It just comes down to, I think I'm just like a sh decent human being. And the way I've lived that, my life was always, uh, don't live your life and do things that you'll regret when you're older. Cause like time is limited. Time is precious. So when I'm 67 years old, I don't want to look back and be like, fuck, I lived my life wrong. So every one of my decisions that I've made in my life so far, and I can say this proudly, I don't regret. Uh, I wish I could have done better in certain circumstances, but I don't regret. And I think that is the basis of my coaching philosophy, you know, about the players and just being not a douche, you know? I chose. Talking yeah. about this KD, this Vivo KD stars. E aí, o que, que vocês acharam sobre o que ele falou? Lembrando que às vezes ele pode ter uma opinião dele mesmo e a gente ter uma opinião diferente a respeito dele, tá ligado? Eu, pra mim ainda, ele é um pouco de tudo. Óbvio que ele tem muito mais base para falar, né? O que ele disse eu não acho que é mentira, mas eu acho que ele é um coach motivacional, eu acho também que ele é um coach estratégico, eu acho que ele é um coach carismático, eu acho que ele lida bem com os jogadores dele... Tá ligado? Eu não conseguiria dizer uma coisa hoje que o Sil não faça dentro da função coach staff. Pelo contrário, eu consigo dizer coisas que ele faça além da função de coaching staff. Que é, por exemplo, a gestão do próprio time. O Sil, ele deu... Porra, mano, o Sil, ele deu uma aula, tá ligado? Quando o Sil, ele fala, ele falou numa entrevista passada que ele liga muito para o Academy e ele também lidera o Academy e usa o Academy para o CBLOL, é uma surra em 98% das outras equipes que estão dentro do CBLOL. Quantas outras equipes têm a cabeça de usar o Academy? De, tipo, aqueles cinco outros jogadores do Academy também podem ser usados para o CBLOL, para um produto maior, para uma coisa, para um resultado final melhor, tá ligado? Pouquíssimos, pouquíssimos. E detalhe, o Academy, é... hoje, por exemplo... Subiu o jogador que era do, do mid do Academy e tá lá performando dentro do CBLOL melhor que muitos, lane, muitos mid laners do CBLOL renomados já. Então, porra, eu acho bizarro, tá ligado, o que o Sil faça. Tem alguns outros times dentro do CBLOL, né, dentro da franquia, que também usa o Academy, mas são poucos os times. A grande maioria só tá largado lá, tem porque tem, tá ligado? Essa é a true. How you put this team together? Because hmm. I think I say... From a, a, I say that in a lot of years in the sequence, we have here in Brazil a shitty scouting. Yeah. We don't know who we, the teams have. The, the teams don't know who they hired, what the qualities of the players. When they hire some kind of foreign year players, Koreans or Europeans, here's a very, it's, we have. Three times, five times you have Europeans in Brazil. Then most of the times you have Koreans. They don't know if they speak English, how they will they think, how they play, who they are. So we just hire people, we burn money, mm. and we make teams. When you see, it's like, whoa, this is a super team. But in the practice, they flop every time. Por exemplo, o que o Shaep está dizendo aqui, que eles simplesmente queimam grana, contratam coreanos, etc., europeus e tal, importes, né? A mais prova disso, a maior prova disso é que ontem nós vimos a entrevista do Abacaxi para o Reginaldo Rossi e o Abacaxi, como head coach, ele falou, cara, eu queria contratar outra pessoa, mas o Lucas Simon ele simplesmente quis contratar o Decoy, que era um estrangeiro, e contratou e botou no time e tacou fora tudo aquilo que eu queria e planejava para aquele split. É o que o Shaep está dizendo agora. <risos> And for Não the first time, conta. I see Certíssimo. someone making a strategy way to put together a team. How you do that and how you convince it, Kate to do the way you do the this Vivicate stars. I, I made a very condensed shorter version of what the process was on my YouTube channel. Yeah. At Silvia. I see, I see. Yeah, yeah. You watch that. Um, but that that was a that was a very very condensed version. First of all, I want to say that People give me a lot of credit. People say you're leading this team and you're changing the project, but it actually starts from the management because they hired me, right? 
I think something that I really resonated with, and I'm just a cog in a really big machine, is that they're very process driven. And this is very important in, in traditional sports. It's very important in organizations, companies, and most importantly for us, esports teams. So uh, I needed people that can follow that process. Uh, and for me, be in line with what not just management wants to do, but what, what I want to do there. So that was like one of the first criteria I looked for. People that can be or have the potential to be process orientated. Some players are incapable of that. So when you look at traditional like sports psychology, players are generally driven by the results yeah. and their gen individual performance. Their review method and their learning method is based on this as well. So for example, uh, when you look at a 35 minute game, they look at the dragon because they're like, okay, we lost the fight when we died at Elder Dragon. But how about the 15 minutes before the Elder Dragon, right? Uh, and so that's the first thing I did. I can't talk about certain things because I think it's a competitive edge. But what I will say is that it, it started off with management Hugo, specifically Hugo Pedro. Uh, and then uh, we aligned on what we thought were non-negotiables for the team. So what are some values that we absolutely all agree that cannot be crossed? Okay. Like if you cross this line, you're gone kind of thing, you know? Uh, and then second was data. So I have a guy from Europe that I know. His name is Mephisto Lewis, Louis Legendre. He's very, very good with data. And uh, he also works with, I think, uh, the XG2 analysts. And he helped us. And we, it was a paid service called Gaddock AI, um, exclusive to us. But now I think you guys can bid for it if you want. I mean, it was one of the deals that I would help him promote it. Uh, and then it was like a combination of eye test interviews, uh, you know, what I think is important in the team environment. What I learned a lot from Peter last year was, to be honest, I didn't learn anything about the game. No offense, Peter. If anything, I think <laughs> it was the other way around. But he did teach me how to be a better coach. And he did teach me how to manage people. Uh, and something that he always stressed was team dynamics and, and culture and, and, and like just dynamics in general when it comes to organizations. So for example, having a leader, who do you want leading the, the team? How, who do you want to have like as a role model? Um, what kind of personalities and, and traits should be, you be looking for? These like little things that I learned from Peter, which in the end became a very good investment for me of my time. So that, I think that's, that's like how it started, you know? It was a combination of like data, um, what I think is necessary in a team, what are our, our values, uh, and then, then it came down to risk reward. So I was pretty mind blown. No one wanted Pedro, like Decimus, because I thought that he was like so fucking good. Uh, and what in my research, what I realized was like, okay, I do agree that he's for Brazil. He was already really good, right? I don't think I helped him that much strategically, that much. I did for sure, but not that much. But the thing is, these things that are not that much matter a lot when it comes to the competitive game. And he was just lacking knowledge, right? So in scrims, what happens is like, you, you know, Decimus, he's like insane mechanically, right? Yes. Yeah. So he would do something stupid, run bot, and he'd get three kills. And because he's mechanically good, he'll just end up with 15 kills. And he'll carry it. Off on screen. Yeah. Isso é o desamish. Isso é literalmente o desamish, tá ligado? Ele mandar bem numa play no early game, porque ele é muito bom mecanicamente, ele pega ali sim, vai até o bot, mata os três. Matou os três, ele tem as três kills, ele, essas três kills ele converte pra 20, 15, tá ligado? Isso é o desamos padrão. But when you get to stage... When you get to stage, everyone's so much passive, right? Yes. And the thing is, like, More the things careful. I've seen in Brazil, Grimms, it's like, it gives me PTSD, you know? Like, I've seen some, <laughs> I've seen some shit, you know, like... <laughs> you get PTSD every day, day too. Oh my God, it's disgusting. If you, if you think you were seeing some shit, I don't, yeah, I don't understand be, why um, they do trust that. Trust me, bro, yeah. it's... I really don't understand why they do that because Stress, they sp spread it there. No, that's training. what I don't understand about Jocko too. Like, how can you look at this for 10 years and be like, that's what I'm going to do. Instead of earning 20 times my salary, <laughs> I'm going to like keep watching these scrims, you know, like it's mind blowing for me. Anyway, <laughs> actually, uh, last year, it's because it's complex because it has a lot of ups and downs. But the first time that I thought that this was actually maybe... I would do other thing was last year <laughs> when I went to <laughs> yes yes I told that to Shepi on I background I think I told you I told I told the Prieto I am yeah. the, he's like the third host he couldn't come today but last year um, end of last year when I was on Academy in Ignis I'm still there but like yeah. I didn't have holidays because yeah the 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 family the the inclusive scene has a different calendar so we played till December mm. and. 
I actually <laughs> spent the entire year watching screams that are like way above the level that I had watched in my career. And it's not like shaming it. It's because it's a lower level. Like yeah, yeah. Inclusive teams are like T3 teams and Academy is actually lower. They're so, beginning the path. No? Yeah, yeah, they're beginning the path. So no shame on them. Yeah. But mm -hmm. in the end of the year, like Christmas Eve, I was like, okay. <laughs> I'm watching too many, too, 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 too many like screams <coughs> that are bad quality and maybe I want to do something else. But when the other year started, like it was not, not Christmas Eve, it was like November. Foi um campo minado de falar sobre isso, hein? Falou bem. When I assembled uh, this uh, academy rooster, because the first one, like last year, it was mostly Sarkis. I didn't like, I went in the middle of the year. But this one, it was me and Sarkis. So, Sarus. I actually did as you did, like, scout yeah. players, personalities, for example. One of the players that I would never have on my team if I didn't, like, interview him was the jungler. Yeah. Tattoo. Tattoo. Because I thought he was very bad. And yeah. <laughs> what changed your mind when I talked to him and saw him on screams, yeah. especially when I talked to him, okay, because I saw qualities que that, isso? like you said, qualities that maybe he was good mechanically, but he didn't have like knowledge and he didn't put you use some qualities that he had as personal traits for the team. And I said, okay, this team, maybe I can watch more shitty screams because I think that we can make the difference. <laughs> yeah. Like on Academy. Yeah. Tattoo is clearly a player in development, you know? Ele é muito cru agora. To... <laughs> no, this is, this is joking. This is joking. Like, we, we lost that to ourselves, okay? It has been unfair. Like, Quats, Quats did yeah. the, our mid laner. He did good. I was actually proud of him. Yeah. Because, uh, just contextualizing, like, last week, we were, like, uh, zero defeats on Academy, and we were 2-1 on the Super Week, 2-0. Then we fought Kid, but it was to cool extent of Lareco on Academy. <laughs> and my major concern was if Quats would hold it up. Yeah. Naturally. Yeah. When I when everything ended, I said, okay guys, the only guy that I know that didn't underperform was actually quite. Yeah. So I'm proud of you. Yeah. And Diogo tá falando que ele tá orgulhoso do, do Quads mid laner da Pen Academy, porque ele tava com receio de ele jogar contra o Tukuli, mas ele mandou bem e lidou bem com as circunstâncias, tá ligado? E de fato, o Quads realmente performou muito, some, muito bem. Some yeah. points. But joking aside, it's much about this academy team yeah. being 100% sincere. Okay. Because yeah, it's hard. It's But very it, hard. It, like drive, it makes you like happy. Like yes, drive. it makes me happy going there every day. Yeah. And actually seeing, for example, if you look at Tato case, for example, he was ninth on... No caso T. He was yeah. on INTZ. <laughs> And seeing now that he's getting like MVPs in a ele row because... Na a NTZ é a nova, nova Zelândia, actually, mano. what I am really good with is jungler and support. Like, yeah. I can really help those em two três minutinhos nós vamos para o behind, guys. Yeah. Podem ficar lot, like, quickly. And the way that they interact with others. Yeah. And when I saw him like getting four MVPs like straight and I said, okay, I actually think I'm making yeah. a difference here. So not just for the yeah. team, but for him. And that motivates me. Yeah, but some, something about that, um, and we are going a bit, bit off topic, but I guess is I also don't really understand, you know, those people that play games on like ultra hard mode. Like, I feel like you're kind of doing that, you know? So I don't, don't, basically don't. what Joko, what Joko is telling me is he's a bit of a, a, a masochist and yes, that's, that's, for sure. that's fine. <laughs> you know, I respect your uh, preferences. Ultra uh, hard mode. Anyway, back to Pedro, Decimus. So I was really mind blown because... I watched him play in Korea and I thought he was really good. And I thought his attitude towards improvement and towards like coaching in general, in terms of like feedback was incredible. Response too quickly. Uh, and he, if I teach him one thing, he learns 10 things. I actually think he's a genius. And what I told management was, and I still maintain this and I hope Pedro doesn't get a big head because of it. I think Pedro Dissimus has a potential to be the best jungler Brazil has ever had in its history. I agree. Fortes, essa aspa. O nome do Pedro, o nome do de exames é Pedro? Deixa eu ver. Porque a Cade tem um outro CEO que também se chama Pedro. Sim, o nome dele é Pedro. Essa aspas é muito, muito forte, tá? Sobre o exame ser o melhor jungle que o Brasil já viu, historicamente falando. Eu concordo, eu concordo. Eu acho que, historicamente... Ele tem tudo, 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 tudo pra superar. Eu acho que, pra mim... O melhor e maior jungle que já teve no Brasil é o, é o Revolta. 
Revolta era um cara muito inteligente, eu acho que muito à frente do tempo, naquele momento do esporte, tá ligado? E com isso ele teve uma colheita feliz ali dentro do LoL e hoje ele tem todo o respeito que ele tem devido ao que ele foi lá atrás, tá ligado? É... E assim, aí falando já de um segundo jungler, fica tudo muito em aberto. Eu acho que o Dizamis, ele é o pacote completo. Ele tem 20 anos, ele é extremamente bom mecanicamente, e uma das coisas que o Sil comentou aqui, que ele não poderia estar mais certo, é o tempo de resposta, o tempo de aprendizado que o Dizamis tem, que é bizarro. Pra quem não sabe, o Dizamis fez um bootcamp pra Coreia no split passado, ano passado, né, finalzinho. Ele e mais outras pessoas, como o Boeiro, né, o Mestre Splinter, o House, o Ayel, entre outras pessoas aí. E ele tava ali entre 500 e 600 pontos, por aí, tá ligado? E ele tava meio stucked, porque eu tava acompanhando. Ele ia para os 600, aí depois ele beirava os 700, voltava pro 480, por aí. E daí o Sil começou a dar coach para ele e falar das pequenas coisas que não são tão importantes, mas na hora do jogo importa muito, como o Sil mesmo falou. E, tipo, em questão, eu acho que dois... A... Três, quatro dias, ele tava com mil pontos na Coreia. Ele tava com 900 pontos na Coreia, tá ligado? Aí ele beirou e teve o ápice de 1.500, 1.400 pontos na Coreia. Isso é bizarro, pô. Então, tipo, o Dizami, sim. Ele é o jungler hoje em, com maior, 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 maior potencial, tá ligado? É bizarro, é bizarro. That's how good I think he is. I agree. And, these, oh. and, and what blows my mind is that these organizations, no flame to pain, no one reaches out to this guy. No one. That is bizarre. That is bizarre. Because a simple eye test, you can see he's incredible. You watch the games from, uh, from Fluxo, and you know he's just like, he just doesn't know what he's doing. Yes. And you watch his scrims, and you know he just doesn't know what he's doing. You just know he has like really good hands, and he knows some stuff about the game, but like not enough. So it, it, it's showing. And nobody wants to pick him up. It, it's, I have it, a theory. You have just it. like a really powerful weapon and just I'm can't point sure. it. No, yeah. no, no, no. Like, pera. O Sil, ele está achando bizarro os times não quererem o Dizamis. Ele tá correto. Mas é simplesmente pelo fato que o Shayep disse lá atrás. O Brasil simplesmente não sabe, não sabe fazer scouting. Sabe por que, Sil, as pessoas não, não têm interesse em pegar o Dizamis? Porque o Flux terminou é, em sexto lugar os dois splits. O resultado dele foi caquita. Então, automaticamente, o valor dele cai, tá ligado? E porque, tipo assim, as pessoas que fazem o scout, eles vêm apenas e visam apenas o resultado final. O que é completamente estúpido. Porque isso é uma coisa que uma grande parcela da comunidade faz. Mas é a comunidade, tipo, são os fãs ali, tá ligado? Agora, um cara que é pago pra, pra fazer isso, ter esse trabalho pífio, de, de fato, é extremamente bizarro, tá ligado? É... Eu não acredito, por exemplo, o Reimão comentou ali. Na verdade, eles também não sabem como desenvolver. Não é que eles não sabem como desenvolver, tá? Eu acho que o Sil hoje, junto com alguns outros coaches, é sim a pessoa mais apropriada para desenvolver novos talentos. Mas a questão ela é mais deep, ela é mais profunda, tá ligado? O motivo que o Dizamos passou é simplesmente por falta de conhecimento por um trabalho piffing da... do scouting brasileiro. Ponto final. Tá ligado? Não é tipo, nossa, o Dizamos é muito bom. Mas quer saber? A gente não sabe como desenvolver ele. Deixa ele pra lá. Não é isso, entendeu? É tipo, eles não saberem que o Dizamos é muito bom. E precisa ser desenvolvido, tá ligado? Essa é a questão. Eu não acho, por exemplo, que ele é, é extremamente foda agora. Que ele é tipo um deus agora. Não. A minha opinião sobre o Dizamos é... Ele é claramente diferente do treino e para os jogos oficiais. Isso eu acho que é unânime de toda pessoa que assiste ele ou joga contra ele, etc. Eu joguei contra ele, né? Quando eu era pro, pro player lá atrás. Eu tinha essa, vi essa visão. Eu joguei contra ele, na verdade? Acho que sim. Acho que sim. Só que ele precisa fazer essa transferência dos jogos não oficiais para o campeonato. Tá ligado? Da screen para o CBLOL. Se e se... detalhe, eu acredito que... O Dizamis, ele tem tudo, 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 tudo pra não, não só ser o melhor jungler que o Brasil já teve, mas também ser o melhor jogador a nos representar lá fora, tá ligado? Ele facilmente pode ser aí jungle de uma LEC, de uma LCS, tá ligado? Às vezes, por que não ir pro Academy da LCK, 
Bottom fezes? Salary? I'm pretty sure it's like oh yeah, ninety percent of oh, our budget. Oh yeah. No, 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 seriously. I don't know. I know CEO's yeah. salary. I think it's ninety oh, yeah. percent of our player budget. He oh, Miracles. Just, just uh, getting the topic for changing. Uh, I actually I don't talk about. What, é porque, tipo, exactly what I... essa ideia que eu falei é a ideia final com o Seal desenvolvendo ele muito bem e ele sendo um jungler muito bom aqui para a nossa região, que ele tem um potencial. E daí, com tudo isso, é uma coisa, por exemplo, se eu fosse ele, já ia aprendendo inglês, tá ligado? O Ninja Canalha, jogador da, da INTZ, sabe qual, qual que é o sonho dele que ele fala é, para todas as entrevistas? Jogar lá fora. O ninja da INTZ, tá ligado? Que tá 0 barra 9. Todo jogador dentro do Brasil tem que ter esse sonho de ir lá pra fora, tá ligado? Ainda mais um jogador bom com potencial imenso. Deixa eu voltar aqui porque eu acabei perdendo, né? Se o seu salary, I'm pretty sure it's like 90% of our budget. <laughs> no, seriously. I don't know. Because I know se o seu salary. I think it's 90% of our player budget. He has more than me, bro. Just, just getting on that topic before changing. Uh, I actually I don't talk about what exactly what I baixo, né? prioritize on. I say the yeah. things about the Zamis, for example. But he already has some some stuff on him as a player and as a, mm. a person that it takes a lot of time to teach and some mm. things you can't teach. Mm. And he already has that. So the part that lacks, it's much easier to yeah. put in there. That's why I believe that he can be that too. And I think that he won't get a big head because of last year. Because yeah. last year, he yeah. was like... I think a little different. Because uh, I see here in Brazil, all the community in the teams, yeah. they have... Um, they get... They, they, how do I say that? It's very important to them how the community sees their players. So... Many times they they don't reach to some players, they don't bring some players to their team because the community say there's a Mimi, they don't yeah. play very well. But in the reality, if you work with him, with him he will improve yeah. a lot. But a lot of teams here in Brazil don't want to do that, don't want to know the real potential of this player. They just want to pay. He them. only hears the community and say, if I bring this guy to my team, They will, they, they, my, my fans will eat me alive. So I don't want this risk here with me. <laughs> I don't so English chat. In many times, we lose a lot of very good players because the teams don't want to. Put Alguém this consegue risk me online. citar exemplos do que o Chaep está dizendo aqui sobre pessoas que passaram a ser meme e daí as organizações ficam com receio de trazê-las para o time porque os times comerão eles vivos? Alguém consegue me passar? Micão? Pera, mas vocês acham que o Micão é um bom exemplo disso, guys? Porque o Micão não é sobre ele ser meme ou alguma coisa assim. É simplesmente sobre o histórico dele não tá muito positivo nesses últimos anos. Redbert? Redbert participou do time que ficou um barra 17. É sobre ser meme ou é sobre histórico? Ou é sobre o passado? Desculpa, eu acho que não é bem isso. Crastiel? Vocês verdadeiramente acham que o Crastiel também é um bom exemplo disso? Algumas pessoas do chat estão acertando ótimos exemplos, como o Mills. Eu acho que o Mills, ele era um ótimo jogador, que daí, devido a algumas opiniões, ele acabou sendo taxado como, tipo, podre, o pior do planeta Terra, tá ligado? Mas o Mills, ele era muito bom e acabou aposentando por falta de oportunidade, se eu não estou enganado, tá? Porque eu não era tão antenado assim, né? Tipo, as coisas aconteciam, eu não era fofoqueiro, eu não corria atrás. Mas eu acho que sim. Avenger? Oi? Como assim, Avenger? O Avenger, ele tá no Academy hoje e não tá performando constantemente bem, tá ligado? Ah, vocês estão beitando. Ah, <risos> vi tudo. Boal, eu acho Boal também um bom exemplo desse jogador que, tipo, devido a algumas coisas, acabou tendo uma imagem ali, como que eu posso dizer, piorada, e daí os times ficaram com receio de contratá-lo. Concordo, concordo. Assim, vocês citaram muitos aí que eu achei NA, mas, guys, vocês precisam entender que se o histórico não ajuda, é complicado, tá ligado? É bem complicado. Yeah. I think that. Yeah. And it takes some balls se o cara ele só perdeu... Yeah. Yeah. O receio de contratar ah, ele faz sentido. You, you, you não é sobre ser meme, I mean, é sobre ser ruim. Big balls. So it's okay. I have gigantic balls, you know? So it's like... 
No, that aside, I just C-O. think he's an, an incredible athlete. <laughs> what also helped is our data. So Gaddock AI, um, that's what it's called. It's on my YouTube channel if you want to know details. Uh, and he was the number one jungler there. Like by far. In data. By far. Not even close. <laughs> Não, olha ali, ó. Mas, Mini, o histórico não ajuda justamente porque a galera não faz bons scouts. Concordo. E, tipo assim, o que acontece? A gente não precisa se basear exclusivamente no resultado final, tá ligado? Mas ele ajuda em algumas coisas. Por exemplo, quando eu falei que o Redbert ele ficou 1 barra 17, né, no, no último split, é, ele foi o grande errado e... O pioral ali do time e tal? Não. Aquele com um conjunto ali era um conjunto fla- é fraco, né? Teve o Flawless, etc. Mas o Redbert também não, não foi a solução, tá ligado? E eu, inclusive, fui a favor dele ser contratado pela Loud. O resultado final, você tem que ter um julgamento melhor. Mas se aquele jogador, ele tá... Terminou em último, no, no último split. Em penúltimo, no penúltimo split, tá ligado? foi para o sexto lugar e daí ele performou mal, ele ancorou o time dele, fica complicado, entendeu? Fica complicado. Prod is up there too. Prod is number one. And uh, we actually wrote in our scouting list, Pro Delta, not possible. And then this incredible organization with tradition said, here it is, you can have him. <laughs> I love Pen Gaming. Thank you. <laughs> I love it, Spencer, really. No flame, but... Tipo, eu mesmo critiquei sobre fazer scouting baseado em resultado, e talvez eu tenha discutido um pouquinho sobre resultado aqui. É, mas o que eu quero dizer para vocês é, o resultado final, ele é uma métrica, assim como várias outras, tá ligado? Isso a gente precisa entender. É, se um jogador está sendo constantemente ruim, está sendo constantemente dando underperform ali e tudo mais, é uma métrica e é um julgamento que vai cair sobre ele tá ligado? Não tem muito como é, falar. Agora, por exemplo, o caso do Dizames, que ele fala ali, né? O Dizames, por mais que ele tenha terminado em sexto lugar os dois últimos splits do ano passado, dava pra você ver um potencial muito, muito, muito claro nele, tá ligado? E dentro desses dois splits, ele até teve alguns momentos ali, alguns ápices da gameplay dele, tá ligado? Então, dava para você ver. Dava. Dá, dava. Tipo assim, a gente ali, a olho cru, etc., vocês da comunidade, talvez não. Mas o cara que recebe pra isso, ele era obrigado a enxergar isso, tá ligado? O Dizames, ele ficar dando sopa numa janela de transferência é realmente bizarro. Concordo com o Sil aqui. Mas é difícil defender alguns jogadores em que vocês estavam citando aí, viu? Olho cru não, olho nu. <risos> mas é a mesma coisa, viu? Tem o um Zinho no final. <risos>